Hello, fellow human, and welcome back to the Higher Ideas Podcast. Today's episode is pretty special, or at least to me it is, and it's also a long time coming. It's about two and a half years overdue. I'm going to share with you a crazy story that happened to me in May of 2013, um, and I mean a crazy story. It's also a scary story, and it's also a sacred story. Um, it's an experience that happened to me that absolutely shattered my views, that changed me in unchangeable ways and sent my life tumbling, uh, absolutely tumbling. And even now, two and a half years later, I'm still tumbling in a lot of ways. I still haven't landed from this. So I'm sitting right now, if you can believe it, in the attic of an old wooden barn, surrounded by the artifacts of my ancestors. And as I look around this space, I kind of realize that it's pretty appropriate for the story I'm about to share, because I'm about to take you into a similar room, very much like the wooden attic of a big barn. I'd like you to imagine a space about the size of a small classroom, made all of wood, the floor is planked wood on a sort of deck that's elevated about a foot off the ground. So it resonates and bounces uh, at the strike of a heel or with the walking around. And all around this rectangular space, the walls are also made of wood and wooden beams. Except they're half walls. Um, their lower half is wall and their upper half is open to the outside all the way around. And above, the underside of a big, towering roof made of wood and, on the outside, thickly stacked palm leaves. This is the space where all of this happens. And this is a hut sitting in the middle of a field, which is in the middle of the Amazon jungle. Now, in this humble wooden space is me laying on a thin lounging mat. And as I lay there, waiting, to the left of me is a door. The doorway I use to come into this space. It's just a half wooden door with a hinge, nothing too complicated. To the right of me, at the far end of the room, is a man who's old enough to be my father. And this man is a healer, a medicine man, a traditional Peruvian shaman. And I've come all the way to the middle of the jungle, in the middle of the night, to meet this man and have a traditional healing ritual, a spiritual experience. A few hours ago, when we entered this space, this man and I, the shaman I call Maestro, drank a certain tea together, a certain medicinal brew, which is known as ayahuasca. This is a psychedelic drug, one could say and induces visions. And for hours now, we've been in this space together in silence, while I have visions once in a while, psychedelic visions, and for the most part, we're just there in silence and in darkness. And when I say silence, I don't mean complete silence, because outside, all around us, in the grass, in the trees, in the bushes, high up above somehow, we're surrounded by the sound of insects, thousands, if not millions of insects of every different kind, chirping and buzzing and singing. There are frogs, there are geckos, it's constant motion. This place is surrounded by life. And inside the hut, though we've been silent now for hours, once in a while the shaman would sing some medicinal songs, some traditional shamanic songs meant to heal, meant to invite spirits and healing. They're short and sweet songs that uh, he launches into the air once in a while between our long silences. And they sound a little something like this. La medicinita del dragon viene ay, di, 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 di. 
El dragoncito dorado va cantando y ay, di, 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 Y en tu corazoncito va poniendo su medicinita luminosa y ay, di, 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 di. Y en tu mentecita va iluminando con la luz divina. Ay, ay, di, di, di. Lindo dragoncito, manda, manda medicina. Ay, ay, di, 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 di. Lindo curandero, el dragoncito dorado. Ay, ay, di, 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 di. Vas iluminando tu mentecita, y ay, di, 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 di. Vas iluminando tu corazoncito, y ay, di, 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 di. And as I said, over the last few hours, I've been having psychedelic visions to the tune of Maestro singing once in a while. And I'm used to psychedelic visions. I've been having them with mushrooms over the years. And so far, nothing unusual was happening in our ritual. Until now. You see, I had felt a disturbance in the space a few minutes before as if someone was in the room with us. And I'd opened my eyes to check by the candlelight, only to find out it was pitch black. The candle had gone out, and it was so black in that space, you couldn't see the tip of your nose. And after leering around for a while and realizing nothing was amiss and everything was silent, and Maestro on my far right hadn't reacted or skipped a beat, I'd closed my eyes and tried to relax and get back into the rhythm. <gasps> Holy shit, what the, f what the hell was that? The floor trembled under my mat at some kind of impact to the left of me outside, tackling the building and shaking the entire thing. I opened my eyes in the darkness to figure things out, but it had come and gone so fast. What the hell? What? Did that just happen? I didn't even have time to figure it out before the sound of the wooden door scraping open across the floor to my left sent freezing chills through my body. And seconds later, another sound, like a 300-pound man falling across the floor on his knees and elbows, also through the open doorway just to my left. My mind started absolutely racing for answers because there was nothing psychedelic about this. And then I thought, aha, I get it. The candle blows out. I can't see anything. This is Maestro. This is Maestro playing a trick on me. This is theater. But then I could hear him still off to my right, still sending his soft half whistles, almost in a chant, but so softly now, as if he knew there was something in the space. So if it wasn't Maestro, what the hell was it? And then I started thinking, ah, I get it. This is an accomplice of his. This is a villager snuck into the field, knowing that it was time to spook the tourist when the light goes out. But then I heard it breathing in the left corner. Breathing that was not human. Breathing with a mouth that sounded big enough to swallow me whole with lungs behind it, big enough to be those of a bull. And at the same time, I could feel it looking at me with a hundred eyes. That feeling of being stared at a thousand times coming from the left side of the room, painted across my side. Frog's eyes. Somehow I knew there were hundreds of giant frog's eyes. And then I realized that the sound of the frogs outside had become fevered, as if every single one of them was cheering for this, this thing. 
There was a stillness while I sat there, my eyes open in the pitch black, laying there frozen solid, waiting for Maestro to say or do something, or the thing to go away or do something, or what the fuck? And then a message came to my mind, from outside my mind, and it said, it's time for healing to begin. The thing at the door has come to assist, and it must now come closer. I didn't know what the hell was going on. All I knew was this was nothing, nothing I'd ever encountered in the psychedelic experience. This was, this was real. And this thing in the corner felt huge and heavy, and I could feel power radiating from it. But Maestro had given me one piece of advice before we started, only one piece of advice, confidence. His words echoed in my mind at the thought of letting this thing nearer. And I thought, okay, confidence. And I accepted it. As soon as I thought that, the thing started shifting closer. The breathing started coming nearer. I felt the floor shiver under each of its motions as I heard the sound like thick skin scraping dry dirt over the wooden planks. It slid closer and closer, and the breathing came nearer and became taller and louder. And all too soon, it was right by my side, towering over me, breathing. And I was still absolutely petrified, trying to figure out what the hell is going on in this hut. And then as it sat there only inches to my left, it happened. Maestro! I shot straight up on my mat at the sound of something. Something exploding right next to my left ear. I didn't know what the hell it was. I only knew, holy shit! Holy shit! And a flashlight came on in Maestro's hand to my right, and he was on me quickly, rubbing my back with one hand and shining his flashlight to the doorway, saying, it's okay, calm, confident, confident. And I turned to look towards the door, only to find that the door was closed. And there was nothing there. But Maestro knew. How did any of this make sense? How, how did he know there was something at the door? How did... What the fuck? And as my mind went tumbling down a tunnel of confusion, trying to figure it all out, I also realized that the sound I had heard just next to my left ear was the bucket that had been sitting there in case of vomit which had been smacked aside and gone rolling across the entire room. Although I could clearly now see, there was nobody to the left of me. This was poltergeist level activity. This was impossible, but it had just happened. I struggled to understand what the hell I'd just witnessed, and Maestro lit the candle and started pacing around the room swinging his arms low in some kind of shooing motion, as if trying to usher something out of the space. How did he know there was something at the door? How did he know there was something to shoo out of the space, unless something had really just been there? How did all of that seem so real? Nothing made sense, nothing. And I was absolutely lost. Maestro left the room to get me some water, leaving me to try and pull myself back together, try to pull some understanding of reality out of, out of the impossible facts I had just witnessed. By the time he got back, I was no closer to understanding. I was so shaken, but Maestro, he was calm, as if this was just everyday business. He only sat down at his place to my far right again and looked at me, with an eager smile. And when I could finally manage to say a word, the first thing I asked him was, Maestro, did the building just shake? I wanted him to say no, to bring me back to a reality that made sense, but instead he only chuckled and said, See! Si! So as it stood, there was only one explanation. Something had physically shaken the entire building Something had opened the door and tumbled into our room, and something came closer. Until it got right next to me, and for whatever goddamn reason, 
decided to smack a bucket out of its way and scared the shit out of me. A spirit. A real spirit. So that's it. Just a taste of my absolutely crazy ayahuasca experience. I told you this was a crazy story. But it only gets crazier because that night was far from over. And that spirit was only the first to come through our space that night. Hours of it. Hours more, I went through terror, struggling with fear as I witnessed all of the rules of reality fly out the window. Spirit after spirit manifested and came at me, each bringing messages, teaching, and healing. By the end of it, I had no choice but to come up with a whole new worldview. And this was such an experience that I came out a completely transformed person on a radically different life path. It changed everything. And yes, a lot of it was terrifying. I told you this was a scary story. But overcoming that fear, I eventually realized the amazing truth about all of it. These were miracles I was witnessing. I lived through a night and a week after that full of impossible miracles. But fellow human, miracles happen when you wander that close to God. Oh yeah, we're going there. This thing got that deep. Ayahuasca gets that big. I told you this was a sacred story. Miracles. Now look, I know I'm dropping a lot on you here. Uh, it fell on me just as quickly, and I just had to find a way to swallow it all. And I'm sure people are thinking, this guy can't believe this was all real. Or maybe this guy's full of shit, and I can't blame you for that. This is absolutely crazy. But all I can say is this. The spirits gave me a task that night. Go home and write a book. Tell your society about this night, ayahuasca, and miracles. I made that promise on my life. I came home and started writing, and for the next two years, nothing else mattered but that book. Writing, editing, illustrating it as carefully as I could, because this is the most important thing I've done in my life. And by the time I looked up, I had left a high-paying career, lost my apartment, money, friends, relationships, Opportunities, pleasures, nothing else mattered because I witnessed miracles and the world has to know. It's a crazy book. It's a scary book. It's a sacred book. And every word of it is true. It's called Ayahuasca, Terror and Miracles in the Peruvian Amazon. And you can find it at Terror and Miracles. Dot com. Read it, don't read it, believe me, don't believe me. All I know is my job is done. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go rest for about, oh, five years. Until next time, fellow human, keep thinking. <laughs>